youth with my friends, and I could drink anything flammable and party until sunrise. Then calmly go to work, I had a very enlightening experience that flipped my worldview. I realized I knew very little about women. Some of them can be extremely sly and betrayingly nasty. If you come across such a creature and don't spot it right away, you'll end up bawling like a crocodile for a long time. So by sharing my story, I hope you learn a lesson that will benefit you moving forward. Fools learn from their own mistakes, while the wise learn from others. It's best to start from the beginning. I had a friend named Mary. We met in our last year of college, dated briefly, but nothing too serious happened between us. Still, I enjoyed talking with her. She was always bubbly and cheerful, adding color to the gray weekdays. So over the years, we became good buddies. My life revolved around ambitious plans for the future. Meanwhile, over a few years, Mary got married, had a kid, got divorced, then stole a well-off man from another family with two kids to get married again. Despite all her pushiness and determination, she had an Achilles heel. She was blindly in love with her first boyfriend. Whenever he appeared, Mary would drop everything and everyone for him, and he treated her like a dish rag. Maybe it's even fairer to say a bit better than a used piece of toilet paper. All he had to do was call, and Mary would hike up her skirt and run to him. He did whatever he wanted with her. He often borrowed money and didn't pay it back, disappearing for up to six months. However, this time everything didn't go according to plan, and Mary was caught cheating. In the evening we met in a cafe, and Mary, as always, told me all the details of how she had managed to sneak away to another city to meet her old lover, how she had thought of everything in detail. One thing she hadn't considered was her old cell phone, which she should have gotten rid of long ago. Mary began her story. Can you imagine? Everything was in full swing, and then John calls. I was practically at my peak, at the finish line. John must have sensed this and called at the worst possible moment. The annoying sound of the phone distracted me. I reached out to deflect the call, and apparently accidentally swiped my finger the other way. Stop! I exclaimed so loudly that people started to turn around. That's right, Mary confirmed. I checked the phone this morning and realized that John had been listening to the vivid details of my affair for 15 minutes, and I wasn't holding back at that point, as you can imagine. I laughed because the absurdity of the situation was hard to even picture. However, my friend didn't seem worried at all. Mary continued in the morning I tried calling him, but he... Mary paused, obviously didn't pick up, and we only talked when I got back. And did he forgive you? I asked. John tried to confront me, but I confronted him back. I said I was at my sister's, and we chatted in the kitchen over wine until morning. And the phone was in the bedroom by the TV so I had no idea what was going on there. Mary laughed and said, get this, that fool believed it. I looked at my friend and realized how simple it all was. Whoever pushes harder is right. That's how she cheated, got caught, but still got away with it, leaving John feeling guilty. I thought, it's good we never got into a serious relationship. Otherwise, I could have easily been in John's place with horns getting in the way of fitting through doorways, broken and offended. But life set everything in its right place, and very soon. Three months later, John dropped the horns right in the middle of his birthday celebration. He simply stood up to make a toast to his wife in front of all the relatives and friends. He theatrically stood up and said he had been cheating on Mary with her sister for the past three months. He noted that her sister was much better in bed, and Climax moaning like what he heard on her phone that she left by the TV. Having said that, he drank up and simply left her birthday party. Mary didn't feel any particular shame, to her it was just a petty nuisance. 
But her father, who was at the celebration, looked at his daughters in a completely different light. Mary continues running with her skirt hiked up to her lover. She and her sister didn't even fight, but it was harder with her father. He couldn't see his daughters for a year, but eventually came to terms with it and started talking to them again. What else could he do? He doesn't have any other daughters. Besides, he raised them this way himself.